Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Riley, doctor of science, and I'm here today to talk to you about gravity. Gravity, it's the force that keeps me and you and every living creature on the Earth on the Earth. Without gravity, we would just fly away, but instead we're pulled to it like this. But what if there wasn't any gravity like this? It was once stated by the great Aristotle, objects of greater mass will fall quicker than objects of lighter mass. Let's see. <laughs> well, of course the ball drops faster because like Galileo said, its mass is larger. And for the feather, the air resistance causes the feather to fall slower. So I pose the question, what would happen with no air? Scientists attempted the same experiment, but this time with little to no air circulating. And to our surprise, the feathers fell at the same time as the ball. Sir Isaac Newton, who we famously know as the person who discovered gravity when an apple fell from a tree and hit his head, he was very intrigued by this and started to ask himself, why exactly do things fall? Everything that goes up must come down. What goes up must come down. Oh, oh, spinning wheel. Oh, sorry, I got a little carried away there. If we didn't have any gravity, then everything would just float. Then along came Galileo Galilei, who further clarified that the time of distance is dependent on the weight, which in layman's terms means size does matter. Isaac Newton wrote the now famous three laws of motion in his book, Principia. So here we are to talk about Newton's three laws of motion. And to help me out, I brought my intern, Ned. He's gonna help me out, right, Ned? Hello, doctor. Hello. My name is Ned, I'm a senior and going to graduate this May. Correct, he's a senior. Anyway, the first law of motion is the law of inertia. Inertia. Now what? Inertia says that a body at rest is going to stay at rest. <laughs> Not, 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 hey, woo, not that kind of rest. <laughs> like, you just stay still. You got it? Yes. Okay, a body at rest will stay at rest unless it is acted on by an outside force. And then it also you've woken says up a sleeping giant. that a body in motion will stay in motion unless <laughs> it is acted on by an outside force. You can't catch it. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch it. Stop. See? So that's inertia. All right. Inertia. I wonder, does force and gravity have anything to do with the moon and the sun and the universe? The International Space Station orbits the Earth by Earth's gravitational pull with no engine. This is the same way the moon orbits the Earth. The moon's gravitational pull also affects the changing ocean tides. High tide is when the moon's gravitational pull is the strongest, and low tides is when the pull is uh, the weakest, maybe taking a break. Albert Einstein created the theory of relativity, which honestly, I don't have the time to go down that rabbit hole of black holes, light travel, and parallel universes. But gravity is still one of Earth's greatest mysteries. But enough of my lecturing. Let's move on. Let's do some experiments right after this brain break. Inertia. All right, now what we're gonna do next is an experiment in centripetal force. You heard that right. Some of you may have heard centrifugal force, but that is what we're doing today, centripetal force. We're gonna use one normal penny. Let's see, this is a uh, year 1967. It was a good year, I'm pretty sure. We're gonna put this penny into this clear balloon. Let's see, here we go. In it goes, pop it up, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. yep. And then I'm gonna use my lungs and blow it up. I think that's pretty good. All right, now I'll tie it and we're good to go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it just like this. And then I'm gonna simply circle my hand really fast. 
now. Can you see that? You see that? The thing is, it's going very fast inside, and it is going to slowly be drawn down by gravity. But what's happening is actually Newton's first law of motion, which is known as inertia. And inertia says that a body in motion wants to stay in motion until an equal and opposite force acts upon it, and then it will stop. I'm gonna toss that balloon. Who knows, maybe it'll land Fire. in your backyard. Whoa. And now we're gonna move to a hex nut. Now the hex nut is, has a hex, stands for six, means it has six sides. I'm gonna drop it in that same type of balloon. And once again, I'm going to use my lungs to blow it up. And now we're gonna do the same experiment, but what you're gonna learn this time is that sound is a vibration in the atmosphere that carries energy from one point to another. So when we combine centripetal force with sound, we're gonna get this. Check it out. Whoa, let's try that again. Now, what we're gonna need is a metal ruler, not just a wooden one, it's gotta have a metal side. We need some plastic bottles, very strong magnets, paper clips, and string, any kind of string. And then you place the paper clip and attach it to the string and put it underneath the ruler and watch the magnets pull the paper clips until they're floating in midair. It's as though the paper clips are flying. Our next experiment, we are gonna make a gravity marble. We'll need one marble and a wine glass, an empty wine glass. Drop the marble in the glass and hold the glass firmly by the base and spin it around. If you're good, you could pick the marble up off the table with the right amount of motion. Gravity can't pull the marble out of the glass with the right amount of motion, even if you hold it upside down. Cool, huh? For our next experiment, and thank you again so much for your help, we're gonna dig into something called cohesion. Ned? Yeah, I'm gonna be in charge of running the next experiment. I'm <laughs> really excited. In this experiment, we're using three different items. A mason jar, a pitcher, and a pitcher. Wait, wait, a pitcher and a pitcher? A, a picture oh. <laughs> and a picture. You got me with that I one. I put those two together so that we'd have kind of a little funny moment. Right, well, <laughs> and it, it seemed to work out. Yeah, because this is a picture of a dog hmm. and this is a picture of water. Ah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pour some water, H2O, into the mason jar. Right. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is it pour water? You see what I did there? Pour, pour, kind of like pitcher and pitcher. Oh, <laughs> it, it's like a double meaning. Yes. But you meant pour, like pour water. Pour water. As opposed to pour water. Exactly. See? <laughs> wow. Okay. Amazing. Picture, picture, pour, pour. <laughs> Where are we going to go next? <laughs> We're going here. Now I'm going to pour some water into the mason jar. I fill it all the way up to the top. Whoa. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this picture on top, like this. Now, what happens next might be surprising to some mm. and not so surprising to others. Hmm. I'm going to turn it upside down. I don't know. But... I'm going to let go. <gasps> Whoa. It's being held on as though there were Elmer's glue. Will you look at that? Yeah. Now here comes the really interesting part. If I take this picture off, what do you think will happen? Weird things. Huh. Oh no, the card fell off and, <laughs> and nothing minute. happened. <gasps> it just fell in there. What? What's the happening? The picture of my dog is floating, doing the dog paddle. <laughs> but the water is not falling out of the mason jar. Wow. That's why I'm going to graduate this year, because I understand what just happened. Wow. And the technical term for what just happened is cohesion. 
I'd like to show a little secret. What? You see, this isn't a normal mason jar without a lid. I've actually put some screen here. So when this is upside down, enough of this screen is holding the water up called cohesion that it doesn't fall through as long as it's equal. But once I tip the jar sideways, it gangs up on part of it and goes right through. Wow. That's cohesion. And I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. And that is the end of that experiment. And I'm going to graduate. I wish I could stay and talk more about force and gravitational pulls and Newton's law and Galileo and apples, but I gotta go. Bye, friends. Whoop.